Hello, I'm Odin, and today I'm going to make another requested prop. It's He-Man's Power Sword from He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. Or it's the Sword of Grayskull, or it could be the Sword of Eternia. It's got a bunch of different names. I made myself a simple pattern to use to cut out the parts for the sword. I printed multiple sheets and aligned them so I could tape them together and get a longer pattern that I could from my home printer. Holding the paper up to some light really helps with seeing through them and lining up the pieces. I cut out the ornate base of the sword, which has different looks depending on your source material. So I made my pattern how I liked it. Another change I saw was how thick the base is. Most replicas are mostly flat, with an added layer on either side. Well, I put a dart in my pattern. Hopefully I can pull the foam back together when I glue it and get a bump to stick out like it was in the original show. I cut out the tip of the sword separately. That way I could add it to the base and get a 36 inch blade. I'll just draw the straight lines on the blank paper to get the size that I like. Now you can just as easily make a shorter sword this way. Because I'm not sure if this dart idea will really work, I want to test it out on some cheaper foam first. I trace my pattern onto some floor mat foam and realize I don't have a good way to mark the center line of the sword blade. So I fold over the pattern and use my pattern notcher to cut holes along the center line. Then I can easily mark them and connect the dots later. Again, there is no pointy part. This is just a test. One thing I do want is consistent angled cuts along the center line. I had done some simple math when I made the dart, and this triangle should give me the angles for the center line and the blades. I cut it from two layers of foam, and that'll make it easier to hold. I carefully tape a spare blade to it, and it took a couple of tries to get the right angle. Too steep on the blade and it cuts really rough, and too little and there's just not enough blade to tape on. Now I'm jumping ahead here. It took three different attempts to figure out where to cut, how far out to cut, and if the peak was going to work and it looks like six millimeters on either side of the center line is the right place to make the angle cut. And I keep that angle going all the way to the back. With the blade of the sword, I make a second triangle gauge and cut the long bevel to make the sword's edge. I use contact cement to glue the center line of the sword and I get the peak in the center of the blade just like I wanted. I also use contact cement to glue the two halves together. The wing area I'm leaving flat sided. I only want a sharp blade along the front edge. I'm happy with how this test piece has turned out. I got the bump to work the way that I wanted it to, and I'm ready to cut it out of better foam. But I'm gonna change the pattern a little and make these side holes a little bigger. I think it'll look better, and when I glue the two halves together, I'll include some sort of core so the blade won't flex. Before I start cutting more foam, I wanna tell you about Surfshark and how they'll help protect your castle from attacks. Now, simply put, Surfshark is a cross-platform VPN that protects its users from the open waters of today's internet. How does it do that? Well, Surfshark uses some serious encryption protocols to secure your information while you're using public Wi-Fi, no matter where you go. It'll keep your bank information and personal information safe. And everyone wants to continue enjoying their favorite TV shows while traveling. Well, streaming libraries are different when you're abroad, and Surfshark lets you access your favorite shows no matter where you are. People from different countries and IP addresses get to see different prices with airline ticket sales, hotel bookings, and car rentals. You might be surprised how much you can save using a VPN. And then there's internet censorship, and it's a huge pain in the ass. Especially if you're traveling to countries which practice censorship. Just change the country that you're connected to, and that's it. You can access anything you want, and the government won't find out. Let Surfshark protect you. Click the link below and use my promo code ODIN for 83% off and one extra month for free. Since you can't take a sword with you, Surfshark will protect your castle while you travel. I traced my pattern onto some 10 millimeter EVA foam from TNT Cosplay. This is denser and smoother foam than the floor mat stuff. I skip the center line and just draw the two I need 12 millimeters apart and increase the cutout size. You already know the rest. Cut the foam, cut the center angle, cut one too deep and get two pieces. I cut the blade edges and then clean up the high spots because this is easier said than done. Add contact cement to the center lines, let the cement dry, stick the halves together, being careful to keep the back edges aligned. With both halves done, I add a plastic coated garden stake to keep the blade stiff. This is actually a lightweight metal tube coated with green plastic. It'll bend if you fight with the sword, but it's really lightweight and cheap. 
and when I stick the two halves together, I start in the back corners, making sure everything lines up. I put some paper between the halves of the blade so I can control when they stick, keeping the blade right all the way to the tip. I cut up little scraps of foam and fill the hole around the garden stake. I just hot glue these in. It's not pretty, but it's gonna get covered up by the grip. And to make the grip, I cut a piece of one inch PVC pipe. The length is about one and a half hands or six inches long. I cut the garden stake a little shorter than that and wrap it in self-adhesive foam so it just barely fits inside of the PVC pipe. And I hot glue the grip in place. Yeah, just about what I expected, actually. I didn't think they'd be perfect, perfect. They're not too damn wavy. It's all right. I trim the edges with scissors. Not the whole thing, just where it needs it. I use acetone to remove the printing from the pipe. I don't want it to show through the spray paint. I cut out the center of my pattern. This is gonna be the raised area in the center of the blade. And I make four pieces from some two millimeter thin craft foam. Gluing this thin foam together is tricky, but it works. And I glue them onto the side of the blade. I had marked which one goes where, just to be sure. So if you look at the sword, um, all the corner points here, it looks like there's hemispheres, like, like kind of like balls on, on the edges, all four of them. And I wanna do that, and the easiest way that I could think of to do that was to actually take some solid foam cat toys, these two up here, and cut them in half. Now I only want the solid foam ones because I don't want the sword to sound like. So for these six, I'll give them to my new kittens I have at home. But I actually bought three packages of these, which meant I had 12 more of these other guys, or at least I did. I actually donated those to a cat adoption agency so they had something because I don't need this many small kitten toys to trip on at home. At first, I thought I could cut the EVA balls in half, but they're too big. So instead, I cut them between the yellow and orange layers. And a little context cement will glue them onto the corners. The back edges are a little rough. I don't want to sand them, so I cut a strip of foam and glue it over the edges to clean that up. And I made it a little bit thinner to give kind of a decorative notch on the corner. I have a 3 8 inch EVA dowel from TNT Cosplay. I cut a piece to fit where the grip meets the blade and stick it on with more contacts in it. That'd be easy, it's just a little wrong. What I'm thinking about doing, I think it'll work well, if I cut just the pink off at, between the orange and the pink, that should give me kind of the curve shape I want. There we go. I use a three inch drywall screw as a pin to hold the pommel in place, hot gluing it into the garden stake and a round piece of five millimeter foam will cover the drywall screw. Basic construction is done. All right. I use a heat gun to seal the foam for painting. The heat closes all the open cells of the foam, which gives a better surface for painting. Blue tape covers the exposed PVC because Plasti Dip spray will not stick to plastic. It'll just peel off. Plasti Dip also seals the foam and acts like a prior for spray paint, which sticks better to Plasti Dip than just to EVA. So I spray painted the entire sword silver, because basically the toy is. Now there's one thing I haven't added to this that is actually on the toy, and there's a little like guard piece or something. It's a little, little angle bit that goes here. And I think that's only on the toy to help actually the action figure hold on to it. I haven't seen this added on any other version of the sword anywhere else, so I'm gonna leave it off of mine, because my sword also doesn't separate like the He-Man Skeletor one should. But I do want to add a little more shading to this, just a little bit in some of the corners, so it's not, not quite so plain, not just pure spray painted, but basically, this thing's done. I paint my acrylic paints where I want to have some shading and wipe off what I don't like. I can seal the acrylic paint with a gloss clear coat, which will dull the silver shine, so I'll lightly spray some silver again over the clear coat to bring it back. And that completes my power sword or sword of gray skull. I kept the painting really simple because it's kind of the way it is on the show and with the toys, it's just silver. And the whole idea was to do this as simply as I could, not use any real power tools. So there's no band saws, no drills, nothing. There's a heat gun so you could seal the foam up for better painting. But other than that, everything is done with a razor knife and glue and I'm really happy with how it turned out. 
and I love the fact that I've got cat toys on the Sword of Grayskull. But one thing I think I'm going to do before I post the template below is increase the width of the blade. This seems a little too skinny. I think it needs to be increased by maybe a centimeter, a little bit more. So if any of you want to actually print this out and give it a shot, please do so and send me a picture on Instagram. That'd be pretty cool. The kid in me that watched this show when it first aired back in the 80s, I really want to hold it up and do the effects and by the power of Grayskull and have fun with it. But I know that that's the top of my frame and when I pick the sword up, you can't see it. So you, you won't be able to see it. So I guess I'll just have to settle with, and this is how Odin makes. I'm concerned that I am short. Well, I have these. <laughs> it's not what I want. It's not even close to what I want. I want to thank all of my Patreon supporters. You guys really do help keep this show going. If you like this video or have a suggestion for something for me to make, please leave a comment below. And if you like what I'm doing, don't forget to subscribe. If you make any of these projects, you can send me a picture.